Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Wall to Wall Art and today we're going to be doing an art review and critique video. This is where I would get uh, artwork from people who are aspiring artists or once we just get tips and look at the work and I would just look over them and give them art review and critique. Uh, to learn more about that you can check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash art and over there there's different tiers that you can uh, subscribe to like a tier where you can see me post content where I'm giving uh, tips and tricks of a uh, working in comics, uh, show you images of what I'm working on, and also like a lot of videos and fun stuff, and also homework assignments. So if you're into doing uh, inking assignments or penciling assignments, you can also uh, download files from there and work on those, and then send me these reviews. Uh, for those of you who landed on my channel and you don't know who I am, my name is Walden Wong, I'm a comic book artist for Marvel and DC Comics. Uh, you can learn more about me and what I do over on my website. My website is waldenwongart.com, and there you can see a lot of fun stuff. There's even a shop where you can uh, order uh, art, art artwork, original art, uh, prints, and a lot of fun things like that. So without further ado, we're going to look at today's art re and review critique video uh, with the Incredible Hulk. Alright, so here's the artwork that I got from one of my patrons. Uh, his name is uh, Daniel. We're just going to call him Daniel. And we're just going to take a look at the image over here. This is uh, Daniel inked over my, my friend Carlo Barberi. Carlo Barberi uh, originally he drew, uh, he penciled this Hulk issue. Currently, as of uh, me uploading this video, he's the artist, current artist on Spawn. So check out his work. He's a really amazing artist. So this is uh, Daniel's scan. We're going to take a look at the pencils right here. Let me zoom in a little bit closer so we can see more of the details. Okay, right over here. This is, these are the inks. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip over to the pencil so you can see, see how the pencil looks. The pencils are right over here. Okay, so sometimes uh, when you're working with a penciler, especially in Marvel Comics, DC Comics, or whatever a comic medium, they'll place all these little X's right over here. I'm gonna make a notation with a red, so mark it so you guys can see. These red color stuff right over here. Um, let me get this image let me adjust this to rgb color um don't merge make sure everything okay it's red so right over here we have these images uh which uh, the pencil will mark in, in red actually All right, so let's take a look at today's uh, artwork that I got from one of my patrons. His name is uh, Daniel, and here's his inks over of my, my friend Carlo Barbary. He's the artist who actually drew this page for The Incredible Hulk. Um, he's also the artist who's currently, as of me uploading this video, he's also the artist who's currently working on Spawn, a uh, photographer for Island Production. So check out his work over there. A very talented artist. So uh, Daniel inked this piece. Here's his inks. And I'm going to toggle back and forth so we can see the pencils and the inks. Uh, usually when I get these art in review, I, I don't really look at them ahead of time. I'm actually looking at them at the same time you're looking at them and I'm critiquing the work. So let's take a look at the pencils. Here are the pencils. You see the pencil areas where Carlo would just draw stuff in red with a little X? These X, for those of you who don't know who have been working in the comic book industry or know anything about how comic books are made, pencils will sometimes draw images and instead of filling them in, they would go in there and just like write a little x x tells the inker that those images are supposed to be black so that's how um those black areas are filled in uh, it's just a way for the pencil to speed up the process of doing the comic book work without actually using the pencil to shade everything in okay just like the hair here is it's, it's not a blonde hair hulk it's actually a black hair and pencil will just go there and write x like he indicated with these little x's here a uh, little x here and these little x's that that and that just means for the ink to spot them in black. So let's take a look at the inks. So Daniel scanned this, and I noticed the scan, if I zoom in, does a little bit of grayness. So for those of you who don't know how to make the scan darker, a lot of times when I'm inking artwork and I'm done and I scan the work, uh, you see some of the grayness of your inks, and the best way to darken up that is to do levels. So I use Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in Photoshop. So over on Photoshop, you, you go to your file, here's your file. You go to image, right over here, you go to adjustment. And once you're on adjustment, just click on levels. And once you have levels, you can move this little bar aside. And then right in the center, you just toggle this to the right. Once you toggle it, 
uh, let me make sure I'm on the right layer first. I'm gonna go back to the inks layer. I'm gonna do that again, image, adjustment, levels. Once you toggle this, your inks will get darker. So what this does is just takes some of the darker areas and will darken it like this, this side. The side on the right is, if you have a little bit of gray stuff, it will just clean it, uh, make it more whiter. So usually after I'm done, inking something and I'm getting ready to send it to the publisher or just saving the file and I want my blacks to be really black and the whites to be really white I just uh, go to uh, image adjustment levels and then I'll toggle the center input to the right a little bit you see how it's getting darker and then on this side sometimes there's a little bit of grayness here I'll just toggle this towards the, the left a little bit you don't want to go too far you just want to do it just just a little bit you play around with it and you get used to uh, what levels that you're interested in having your artwork uh, done so we're gonna go in there and take a look okay so all of this okay for example you see some of this gray area uh, we can always go to image adjustment levels and then toggle this towards the left a little bit a little bit you see how it's disappearing and then here when this is a little bit too light we just move this to the right and it will darken that up you're still gonna leave a little bit of specs in there but um, that's okay. Usually when it's scanned and reduced, you don't really see it. So I want to take a look at um, the image and to see how Daniel did on his uh, inking assignment. So let's see. Okay, so some of these lines here, you see that it's a blunt where the lines aren't, aren't sharp. It's better if you can get those lines a little bit sharper. So I'm going to demonstrate how those lines look if it's sharp. So you, you go with the quill, you go really thin. You hold the brush, if you're using a brush or if you're holding a quill, try to hold the quill or the brush really lightly and then slowly land that line downwards so you get that sharp line. You want these tips, the tips over here, to be as thin and sharp as you can. You don't want them to be blunt where you start off like that, okay? So that's one thing to uh, look out for. Um, your spacing and cross hatching over here is really done nicely, so that's very good. Okay, I'm gonna go back a little bit. I'm gonna adjust the, uh, the levels image adjustment levels I think I made some adjustments a little bit too strong I'm just gonna fix it a little bit okay so I'm gonna take a look at some of the other stuff uh, nice job on the holding lines where you have some areas where it's thicker and it goes thinner this is called line weights the more you can bounce your line weights around the better the image is now let's take a look at the Hulk okay so right over here immediately I see that some areas of the Hulk can be inked a little bit thicker mainly because this line on the Hulk's back you see this line this holding line that line is so thick and then the Hulk's head is like right here it's so thin it would help the Hulk's head pop out even more if you would thicken up this line so I'm gonna go in here and just beef up that line here leave that area thin here and then I will go in here and just beef up this line now I'm doing this in red just so um, once I'm done I will send a hard copy of this to my patron so they can see where my markups are so they'll they'll know what needs to be adjusted and then here I would just go here and thicken up this line and maybe just thicken up that line also the bottom of the chin I can't stress this enough uh, if you're inking faces the bottom of the chin like for example if you're looking at uh, someone's face the bottom of the chin is usually darker because it casts a shadow over there so we're gonna go in here and just make the bottom of uh, the Hulk's chin a little bit thicker like this and that will pop the whole head forward okay so we're gonna take a look at how that looks without the the line underneath there and then now we're going to take a look at it uh, with all the details that place it you see how that just makes the head pop out a little bit better okay another thing we need to work on is uh, the background I know for a lot of artists working on backgrounds is kind of boring so what I usually do is I ink the backgrounds first and when you get backgrounds you don't just use one line weight you try you try to give each building their own um, thickness okay so for example like right here like I would actually ink the outline of the building a little bit thicker the inside the interior lines I would just leave it uh, like I would just leave the interior line thin but the, the exterior line I would make it thicker so I'm gonna go in here and thicken up the outline of this building thicken up the outline of this building here just just give it a little bit of a thicker outline so I'm gonna go in here and make this thicker here and then also always think about foreground middle ground and background um, objects in front are thicker than objects in the background so the buildings here you have you have foreground number one middle ground background and then far background 
Now, if I go in here, you notice that these windows, the, the line thickness of this window is similar to that window. You don't want that to happen, especially if this building over here is in front of all of that building. Okay, so we want this line to be a little bit thicker right here. Okay, when you have that thicker, that building just comes forward. Something's going on with this building here. It looks kind of wonky. Let's take a look at the pencils and see how that looks. Okay, so the penciler, uh, Carlo, my buddy, he drew this. So I would actually draw this line a little bit thicker just to make that ledge uh, pop forward in the foreground. So this line a little bit thicker. So it looks like it belongs to this part of the building. Also, this line needs to be a little bit thicker. A uh, great job on the line weights of the Hulk, like the holding line of the Hulk. Everything about the Hulk, these, these line weights over here, how it's thick here and then it's thin here, all that looks great. Uh, this muscle part over here can be a little bit thicker because it's in the foreground. Like, even this, this is nice how it's thicker. I'm trying to make your lines a little bit smoother. It looks like it's a little bit wobbly. And instead of a line that just goes like right here and it seeps in there, have that line just continue, just continue that line, okay? So it looks natural. Okay, yeah, so I noticed that, uh, yeah, you, the finger work looks pretty good. The line weights on it is very good. I just, I would concentrate on some of the backgrounds and make some of those background pop uh, a little better. Again, always think about foreground, middle ground, and background. We're gonna look at the bottom panel. Okay, so right over here, I noticed that, okay. So I know the Hulk is ink uh, a little bit smaller. Now, when I look at the line work of these, the bigger image, everything is inked in nicely. But when I look at the smaller image, it looks like you had a little bit of a hard time uh, working on line weights. So when I'm doing uh, uh, inking work, sometimes I'll use a magnifying lamp. A magnifying lamp is where I have this lamp that has like a magnifying glass that enlarges the image. So when I enlarge the image and I'm using a crow quill or a micron and I'm inking it, you can get in there and see things more in detail. Right here, the, hook, the line weight on the hook seems kind of like kind of thick and not as clean. It's a little bit kind of like broken over here. So I would go in there and either get a magnifying lamp or maybe reading glasses uh, just to get in there. Not, not to say that you need reading glasses. I don't need reading glasses, but just get in there to zoom in and get those lines a little bit cleaner. Same thing here. Now, you see how this, this, this thing over here, this, um, this barrier thing right over here, the line weight over here is very thin. And then you look at this one, this one is so thick. Again, foreground objects should be thicker than background objects. That said, this line here should be thicker. So I'm gonna make this thicker, okay? And let's take a look at the rest. Okay, good job on the building. So this, the same thing, now this one's okay. That background, this thickness here is pretty good, okay? But we do need to concentrate and focus on how this thickness is and how that thickness is. The one in the front should always be a little bit thicker than the one in the back. Okay, uh, the windows, I when I'm doing inking on the windows, I also, not only am I doing the line weights on the, the whole building, I'm also thinking about the line weights of the um, window. So I when I'm inking, I have uh, repeatograph pins that I use, uh, colonel repeatographs, and there's different sizes. There's like a 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and so forth. So with these lines, I would actually go in there and make these lines a little bit thicker. And then the back, the back lines right over here, the inside lines, I would make these a little bit smaller, okay? Just to give more depth to the artwork. Yeah, so the figure work looks pretty nice, the line weights. Like I'm, I'm looking at the scarf here, how it's so thick, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, it looks like you're doing a good job bouncing the line weights around. I'm gonna look at some of your taper line work. Uh, taper line work, I, I don't really see any much tapering over here. I'm just gonna rotate so you guys can see what I'm gonna do over here. So with the taper lines right here, what I see is you have a, a line over here and then you have these lines that are just blunts going in there. So what, what's happening is you have a, black, a solid black line and then you have these lines, they look like stakes on the floor, like poles that's on the floor. What, what you can do to make those lines a little bit better is to taper the lines. So the taper line, I would go thin and I would press it and make it thicker. So this way, the bottom part over here will close up and become like a triangle. You get like a, a white triangle here and as well as that this red triangle. This is tapering your lines, okay? Almost like that. So don't, don't do any of this. Okay, I want you to do more of this, Daniel. Just push it in, go very lightly, push it in, go very lightly, and then push it in, just like that, okay? 
let's take a look at some other area yeah so a lot of the areas so, so this yeah so some of these lines over here these taper lines i want you to go there and just get it a little bit thicker to close up the area so when we're doing artwork not only are you kind of focusing on the area that you're inking we, we need to focus on the negative space the negative space is the area that you're not inking uh, that means you're looking at the tips of these you see these tips over here they're nice and sharp but the white area this area that you do here they're like a square they're like a rectangle you don't want that you want that to be a triangle just like the tips you want to close that up see these little chips here this is the negative space triangle of the white that's going into the black. You want that transition from the white to the medium value to the black as nice and sharp as you can. Okay, I'm just gonna take a look at random places to see if you did that. Yeah, so same thing, you want to close them up. Sometimes, if you have a hard time using a brush or pressing down the brush to control the tip of the brush or the cocoa, what I'll do is I'll go in there and I'll ink one line, I'll ink another line, another line, and if that doesn't close back, I'll just go back and I'll ink in one more line just to fill it in so i'll do this and i'll do this but try to master it where you can just go do that with one stroke so you don't have to go back and do that now if you're inking with a micron a micron is gonna make you actually go back in there and draw those lines twice to taper those lines uh, a crow quill and a brush is more flexible where you can press down the brush or quill and then those tips will get wider and when it's wider you get that thin to thick line okay yeah so right here a lot of those, those lines i would actually close up okay the, the spacing that you have between these hatch lines is very good yeah so when i say very good that means each line that you're inking in is nicely spaced the distance between here i've seen some uh, artists and inkers when they're doing hatch lines or taper lines or lines like that they're, they're going like this and then all of a sudden it's too far or too long and it's too far like the the length of your line starts in a nice place and it ends in a nice place so this is this is a good good control i just want you to close them up like this that's a little bit better than this you want them to be uh, more consistent uh, okay there's another thing i want to teach you so sometimes you get a cross hatch line which is like a line right over here that just goes into black a great way to show a gradual fade is to go very light and very thin and then as you get into the black area you go in there and space those lines closer and start drawing those lines thicker okay and then eventually close them so right over here what i'll do is i'll go i'll go thin and then i'll start spacing them closer and then i'll start drawing those lines thicker let me go back draw this line thicker until it closes up this gives you a nicer gradual feel from a light color to a medium color to a thick color okay to a black area i mean okay so right up here so right here you just have like a gray area and then a black area so what we want you to do is go from black area to like gradually getting lighter and then start slowly spacing further out so you get like a nice gradation okay uh, let me take a look at some of the other work. Rotate it back in place. Okay. Okay. Good. See, these are pretty, so pretty good. Um, some of these the, is thick to thin. Some of them are, some of the lines are a little bit wobbly. So when it's wobbly, try to flick that line. Okay. So when lines, you see like this line over here, um, this, this line up here, some of them are kind of like curved in a way. So when you're doing uh, these flick lines, what I... No, no, these, these lines look, looks like it's like a line is drawn and you went back and filled it. Uh, what's best is to actually use a quill or brush, press down hard and then flick it. Okay, when you do that, you're gonna get like a nice smooth line instead of like, like, like a thickness and all of a sudden a thin line like that. It looks like plants. Like, like if we look over here, it, look, it looks like these plants that's in the swamp. Uh, but but what, you, what you wanna do is you wanna flick that line like that you can also go backwards and just go thin and too thick like that okay so what i'll do is i'll i'll turn it this way and i'll use the brush and I'll, I'll go like this okay those lines are nice you get that nice clean thin and thick okay let's take a look at some of the other areas let me rotate this back into place okay yeah so there's the hulk uh, nice good very good line weight right over here this helps separate the hulk's shoulder and the rest of the body from this background over here Okay, let me look at yeah good spacing 
then you know, good spacing on everything that I see, very nice spacing. So what I want you to do is work on the line weights, a little bit kind of wobbly over here. Uh, fix this one, make sure those lines are a little bit clean over there. Okay, so I'm just gonna use red and just remove some of that remove some of that line. You don't want that to be way too thick because if the background of this car, unless it's a shadow, uh, this, this line here is too thick. So I will go in here and I would uh, actually remove it. I'm just gonna use a white white paint to kind of make this a little bit uh, thinner. So that way it doesn't take over the rest of the outfit here. See this this line over here is a little bit too, too thick. I'm just gonna go in here and make that a little bit shorter. We want all of this here to be thicker than the background objects. Let me take a look at some. Yeah, otherwise, it's pretty good. Uh, the line weight over here has done well. Um, yeah, a little bit, just a little bit wobbly. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate how I would ink certain lines. Okay, so for this line over here, I see like there's almost like a little bump that bumps upwards. So what I'm making, usually I'll rotate my canvas to where my hand can draw a line. So if I'm drawing a line, and my hand can't make that movement, I'll, I'll rotate the canvas and I'll do something called a ghost line. A ghost line is where I'm using my pen and I'm making that mimic, I'm motion, doing that motion, but I'm not actually putting pen to paper. Uh, I'm going in there to make sure my hand can move that, make that motion. If not, I can just rotate the paper to in the right place. And then I'll go in there and I'll draw that line. Now, when you draw the line, don't look at the tip of your pen when you're drawing or inking, okay? What I want you to do is look at where that line starts and where that line ends. And then make that movement. And then once you have that movement, that ghost line, once you have that line, then you go in there and you ink that line as quick as you can and you're gonna get a really smooth line. That's how you can get like nice smooth line. You can do that with arcs, nice arcs. You can do that with longer lines like this, okay? Like that, or you can even do that with a partial line. For example, um, sometimes you have a line that's like way too long. What am I going to do? So what I what I'll do is I'll go in there, and then I'll make I'll do a uh, motion line. Let's see. Uh, here's a good example. I'm going to rotate this around, but just because my hand works better, I would ink in a partial line. Okay, and then I would rotate it. I would do a ghost line to make sure I can do that mimic, and then I would ink in that line. I'll turn it again. I'll make another ghost line to make sure my hand can do that movement and I will continue that line. This way you can get a nice fluid line all the way around. So sometimes you have a letter, like a line that goes like this. What I'll do is I'll ink this line and then I'll rotate it. Once I rotate it, I'll do a ghost line to make sure my hand can move that way and I'll ink this line right over here. There, and then let's look at the rest of the, the work. Let me rotate it back in place. Yeah, for the most part, everything's good. Some of the buildings, the windows here, they're a little bit off, okay? Uh, that's probably sometimes, um, let, me, let me look at the pencils. Yeah, so sometimes when the penciler uh, drew it off and you see like that and then you, well, usually when I do artwork with buildings and the pencil drew wrong, I, I always go back in there with my own pencil and I would redraw it. Just go, go in there and kind of like, draw in the lines, make sure everything's in the right place, redraw the pencils, uh, make sure everything li is lined up correctly with the line, like with, with grid lines like this. Uh, let me get back in there. Okay, so I'll go in there with a the pencil, draw a grid line from both sides of the window, just with the pencil, okay, because if you're inking in blue line, it's okay to redraw some of the stuff. And then I would, I would go back in here and draw another grid line that goes this direction, okay, in pencil. And then after I have the grid line, I know these lines are gonna match. Then I'll go back in there and I'll ink exactly those area. Like over here, I will ink right over here so it nicely matches. And then once all that is done, I would just go back with the eraser and just erase all the, erase all the pencil grid lines. It's, it's always okay to do that. You don't always have to follow the pencilers, um, like pencils that like is drawn a little bit off. I would always go back in there and fix it and make it a little better. Um, so to be a professional inker is always, don't just ink what you see, try to get in there and make the original pencils better than how you received it. Don't just trace. Uh, if, you, if you're an inker, you should be able to draw a pencil and go in there and make art look even better than how it was submitted to you. That's today's uh, art and review critique from one of my patrons. His name is Daniel. He worked on the Hulk over penciler Carlo Barbieri. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit like and share. 
Um, to learn more about me, check out my website. It's wallowallart.com. Over there, there's a lot of different things that you can look at. There's a shop page, original art that you can buy. Uh, links to all my other social medias on the top left that you can click on and see all my posts. And over on my Patreon, I post uh, exclusive content there, meaning that uh, there's images that I post there that I don't post anywhere else. There's uh, work that, that I currently work on that usually I can't show until it's published. I will also post images and clips and uh, snippets of that. So check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash art. And if you're interested in doing uh, an art review, if having me do an art review over your work, uh, look up some of those tiers and then uh, hit me up over there on Patreon. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I think I just said that. Until next time, have a good day and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.